How many of the long until we talk about the M14 and go back to when they still use the iron sight? But first, if we look at the M1 Garand, the granddaddy of them all. M1 Garand most famous for use in the World War II by the United States, even though made by the Canada guy, his name is John something, but I, I don't remember. Hi, la mo, mo la kong. While M1 Garand did a good job through the Korea and the early part of the Vietnam, United States want to replace with a rifle do everything. That way you don't have to worry about the, 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 the M1 carbine, the M3 grease gun, and the BAR. M1 Garand have two main problems. First problem, it only holds an 8 round. If you are the out and about and you're running the errand with your Garand and three guys come up to you to try to steal your car, you need to be able to do the 22422. Get off my lawn! And the second reason, the M1 Garand made a very loud noise when it go empty let everybody around you know that you don't have any more bullet. Shh, Im Lai, they hear you. To fix the dangerous problem with the M1 Garand, United States added a 20 round box magazine to the M14. But I don't know why they call it the box magazine when you buy it from the store that comes inside the back. The good thing about the box mag, it don't make any noise when it go empty. But while it fixed one problem, it made a new problem. The M14 takes a very long time to do the reload. When the United States switched from the M1 to the M14, they also changed the caliber from the 30 odd 6 to the 7.62 NATO. NATO stands for not available to Orca because the United States don't want to get the killer whale any more ammunition to kill the other whale in the North Atlantic. All the whale matter to me so much, so sad. Doi con con mong thay con ca yoi bi chet nữa. So some other change they make to the M14, they add a flash hider, they also shorten the gas cylinder and the up rod. And they also add the shoulder thing that go up. Even with all the improvement from the M1 to the M14, the M14 is still not perfect. With the M1 and the M14, there's no place for the bipod. But for a very long time, people figure out if you tie the carry strap to your arm, it made it a little bit more easy to shoot. Not only M14 don't have place for the bipod, it don't have place for anything else. In the mid 2000s, all the old M14 pull out used for the battle rifle and the designated marksman rifle. These upgrades were called the Mark 14 or the M14 EBR. Some version of the EBR had an 18 in barrel, some version had the 22 in barrel, this one had the 18 in. All the EBR uses safe chassis for the more accurate. When I first hear the safe chassis more rigid than my wood, I don't believe. Then I see the safe chassis made from the aluminum. It's so hot and so stiff. It don't bend so easy like the wood. The temperature don't make it change so much. Nobody like the cold wood. If the wood get cold, the zero don't hold. So now you have all the rail to attach all the cool stuff. And I also use the adjustable gas cylinder to use with the silencer so I don't bend the up rot. It's always a bad day when you bend your rot. And when you need the camouflage or cover the mirage, you can put this over your silencer, put the cover on, and also you don't burn yourself. So now you see how the M1 Garen evolved over the year to meet the end user needs. Oh my goodness, this one is so heavy. I think the little bunny rabbit, right? I uh... Oh wow, what this one? 
so lie. I think I'll shoot this one now.